So here's a video of me passionately explaining something to the camera with the microphone turned off. Like an idiot. How embarrassing. So why am I explaining this to you? Well, simply because I recorded this video last week and I was very excited when I recorded this about the figured redwood top that I found at Hearn Hardwoods. So I made a video explaining some of the considerations and compromises that you make when selecting for a highly figured set for either the top or the back. Especially as it relates to planing the top or back down to thickness and joining the book match set. And so since I've already planed and joined this top, I'm going to just simply try to doctor up this video and make it as good as I possibly can. But don't worry, for the rest of this video, I will single out clips where you don't have to watch my mouth move and listen to my voice like you're watching some poorly edited foreign film. So like I mentioned, I made a pilgrimage recently to my personal mecca, Hearn Hardwoods, where I mostly purchased supplies, wood for sides, backs, tops, fretboards, bridges, for the student workshops that I teach every month from March through November. But I also spent about two hours, probably more time than I should have, searching for the best possible top, the most interesting top that I could find for the very interesting Tiger Myrtle guitar that I'm building. I needed something to complement the stunning figure of the Tiger Myrtle uh, with something equally stunning for the top. And what I found was this amazing set of figured redwood. Now, as you can see, it has an outline for a Stratocaster on there. I am not building an electric guitar. This is a set that was intended to be sold to someone building a top for an electric guitar, but I'm just going to now thickness this down a lot, producing a lot of waste to turn this into a set for an acoustic guitar. So just know that that's another thing you can look for when you're at a hardwood supplier is look at the wood that they have for electric guitar solid bodies and you just might find something better than what you were seeing in the stacks for acoustic guitars as long as you're willing to put some work into it. So just looking at this top, you might wonder why not always make your guitar tops using figured wood? I mean, it looks great. Well, there are actually many reasons not to use figured woods for the soundboard, and there's really only one reason to use figured wood for the soundboard, and that's the reason that we just identified that, hey, it looks pretty great. So let's talk about all those reasons not to use it. And this, by the way, is not to dissuade you from using figured woods for a top. I mean, what kind of hypocrite would I be? I'm literally using this redwood figured redwood for the top of my guitar and I'm happy to use it. I'm only mentioning these so that you understand the compromises and considerations that go into the decision to use figured woods, especially for first time guitar builders and uh, beginning guitar builders because they are especially prone to be bedazzled by the looks of these woods and not understand the consequences. Obviously, figured woods cost more money, sometimes a lot more money, and if you're spending more money on a piece of wood, you expect to get better results, whatever that means to you, either in terms of aesthetics, or in terms of tone, or both. However, if you don't understand the inherent difficulties of figured woods, like its dimensional instability and its inconsistent workability, then you're likely going to end up worse off than if you used a more plain-looking wood which would be more consistent and more stable. So why does figured wood have less stability? Well, when you are looking at that beautiful figure, what you are really looking at is different types of grain exposure at the surface, really a mixture of side grain and end grain. And it's the alternation between these grain types that gives this wood its wavy texture. The problem, or at least potential problem, is that end grain and side grain respond to humidity changes and warping differently. So when the wood shrinks or expands, it does so more inconsistently than a non-figured wood, which leads to more cupping and warping. A good builder can ameliorate this problem by not thinning out a figured top as much as they might thin out a top otherwise. Now another serious consideration for figured woods is the workability. 
That alternating side and end grain makes it difficult to use edge tools since the grain direction is unpredictable. Often you can still get away with using hand planes or a planer to thickness, but they have to be very sharp, and you have to watch very carefully for tear out. Here I'm using my planer, but I'm only planing on one face, so that if I start getting tear out, I at least won't have to sand through the tear out on both faces, which could easily leave the plate thinner than it should be. I watch carefully as I go, and I switch to the drum sander sooner than I normally would in order to safely abrade down to my final thickness. Because remember, it's edge tools that are finicky on figure. Abrasives work just fine. And then there's also a compromise in tone. Although it's up for debate how much of a compromise it actually is. Remember I said that due to the instability of figured wood, you'd have to leave the top a little thicker than you otherwise would? Well, a thicker top is a stiffer top, and even small differences in thickness amount to significant differences in stiffness, due to something called the cube rule in engineering, which tells us that the height of a material increases the stiffness by an exponential factor of three. I could probably do a whole video on the cube rule, and maybe in the future I will. It's fascinating, so you should look it up. And all this additional stiffness affects the tone because stiffness hinders the modes of movement of the top that we care about, namely the monopole action. And once again, I could easily digress here into another topic that could fill an entire episode, which is the modal movements of the top. But I'll save that for another time. And lastly, with figured or exotic woods, you can easily get caught up in that extra wow factor that these woods give, and you can actually overdo it. Usually just one figured species is enough to create that wow factor, but still be framed and contrasted with simpler woods so as not to look too garish. Now I'm probably towing that line right now with my tiger myrtle and figured redwood, if not squarely on the side of too garish. I'm hoping that this guitar will be an exception to that rule, but we shall see. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So with all this going against figured woods, why am I still using a figured top? Well, because I have the requisite experience to work around its poor stability and poor workability, and I accept, in this case, the potential compromise in tone. Although it may be no compromise at all because I do voice my tops. And I just think it's going to look really great with that tiger myrtle and some maple bindings. So anyway, stay tuned to see more of this build in the coming videos and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Thanks for watching. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.